subscribe the channel and hit the bell to not miss any update. The link to first part of this video containing first 50 cases have been given in the description. In this video, I'm gonna begin from case number 51. Association for Democratic Reforms versus Union of India. Court mandated the disclosure of information relating to criminal antecedents, educational qualification, and personal assets of a candidate contesting elections. The next case is Lok Prahari versus Union of India. Center directed to amend the rules as well as the disclosure form filed by candidates along with their nomination papers to include the sources of their income and those of their spouses and dependents and disclosure of government contracts where candidates or their associates have direct or indirect interest. Next case is Lily Thomas versus Union of India. Section 8, subsection 4 of the Representation of the People's Act 1951 was prospectively struck down as unconstitutional, being beyond the legislative competence of the parliament. I have made a detailed video in this regard. I'll put the link in the description. Case number 54 is Abhiram Singh versus Siddhi Kommachan. Section 123, subsection 3 of the Act prohibits any candidate, his agent, or any person consented by such candidate or his agent from soliciting votes or discouraging voters against voting for a rival candidate on grounds of religion, race, caste, community, or language by declaring such conduct as a corrupt practice. The court has read this provision. Do this allow any reference to the religion, race, caste, community, or language of the candidate or of his rival or of the voters to secure votes or prejudice electorate against a rival in an election? Ashwini Kumar Upadhyay versus Union of India MPs, MLAs cannot be barred from practicing in courts. Legislators cannot be styled or characterized as full-time salaried employees for there is no relationship of employer and employee. Bar Council of India rules prohibit an advocate from being a full-time salaried employee of any person, government, farm, corporation or concern so long as he continues to practice. Next case is Public Interest Foundation versus Union of India. Politicians cannot be barred from contesting elections on framing of charges. Guidelines issued to prevent criminalization of politics. First, while filing their nominations, the candidates must declare if there are pending criminal cases against them in courts. Secondly, political parties are also responsible for putting up details of criminal cases filed against their candidate on their websites. Thirdly, parliament must legislate on the matter to ensure that candidates with criminal antecedents do not enter public life or become lawmakers. Case number 57 is Sarla Mudgal vs Union of India Emphasize on the need for a uniform civil code. I have made a detailed video on this. The link will be provided in the description. In Ray Keshab Singh 1965, it could not be disputed that in the matters of privileges, the house was the sole and exclusive judge, provided such privilege could be found in Article 194 Clause 3. The question whether a privilege as claimed by the House was provided by Article 194 Clause 3 or not was a matter of the court to decide. The nature and scope of Article 194 Clause 3 was thus to be determined by the court. The court also observed that such privileges were necessarily subject to Article 21 and 22 of the Constitution. Case number 59 is P. V. Narasimha Rao vs. State Court held that those who took bribe but did not vote will be liable for prosecution under the Prevention of Corruption Act as they were not protected or entitled to the 
immunity under Article 105, Clause 2 of the Constitution. Whereas those who voted will be protected even though they had taken bribes. Swapnil Tripathi vs Supreme Court of India Supreme Court allowed live streaming of court proceedings. Shayar Singhal vs Union of India Supreme Court struck down Section 66A of the Information Technology Act 2000 relating to restriction on online speech on grounds of violating the freedom of speech guaranteed under Article 19, Clause 1, Sub Clause A of the Constitution of India. Joseph Shine vs. Union of India Section 497 of IPC is a codified rule of patriarchy. The ban shall Section 198, Subsection 2 of CRPC, which gives the husband the exclusive right to prosecute his wife's lover, manifestly arbitrary. K. Puttuswami vs. Union of India Court upheld Aadhaar as a reasonable restriction on individual privacy. Upholding the passage of the Aadhaar Act as a money bill, the majority opinion upheld the ban Aadhaar linkage but, but declared linking Aadhaar with the bank accounts or mobile SIM card unconstitutional. The card was not necessary for children aged between 6 and 14. Another cybersexual avian as right to education was a fundamental right. Statutory bodies like CBSC, UGC cannot ask students to produce their other cards for examination like NEET and JEE. Section 57 of the other card was struck down as it was used by the government to compel private companies to demand other verification for services. Indian Young Lawyers Association vs. State of Kerala Exclusion of women from Temple of Lord Ayappa was a discriminatory practice which violates the freedom of religion of women devotees. Devotees of Lord Ayappa do not constitute separate religious denomination and the prohibition on women is not an essential part of Hindu religion. Also exclusion based on impurity that is menstruation is a form of untouchability. Nabte Johar vs Union of India Section 377 of IPC is irrational, indefensible and arbitrary. The sexual orientation of each individual in the society must be protected on an even platform. For the right to privacy and the protection of sexual orientation lies at the core of the fundamental rights granted under Article 14, 15 and 21 of the Constitution. Respect for individual choice is the very essence of liberty under the law. Section 377 of IPC assumes the characteristics of unreasonableness for it becomes a weapon in the hands of the majority to seclude, exploit and harass the LGBT community. Olga Telis vs Bombay Municipal Corporation Right to livelihood is a facet of Article 21 of the Constitution. John Velotam vs Union of India Court declared Section 118 of the Indian Succession Act unconstitutional as violating of Article 14 of the Constitution. It restricted the right of a Christian having a nephew or niece or any other relative as regards his power to bequeath his property for religious or charitable purposes. DC Vadva vs State of Bihar The power to make an ordinance is to meet an extraordinary situation and it should not be made to meet political ends of an individual. Repromulgation from time to time is a subversion of the democratic process and a fraud on the constitution. If ordinance making was made a usual practice, creating an ordinance Raj, the court could strike down repromulgated ordinances. Krishna Kumar Singh vs State of Bihar The court held that the requirement of placing the ordinance before the legislature is arbitrary. Repromulgation of ordinance is a fraud on the constitution and the subversion of democratic legislative processes. The court also held that the satisfaction of the president under article 123 and of the governor under article 213 while issuing ordinance is not immune from judicial review. A.K. Roy vs. Union of India President's ordinance making power is not beyond the scope of judicial review. However, 
the need to exercise judicial review over the president's decision arises only when there were substantial grounds to challenge the decision and not at every casual and passing challenge ADM Jabalpur versus Shipkan Shukla the issue was whether an order passed by the president under article 359 clause 1 of the constitution suspends the right of every person to move any court for the enforcement of the right to personal liberty under article 21 upon being detained under a law providing for the court answered in the affirmative though overruled in K. Puttuswami vs. Union of India case BP Single vs. Union of India The President In effect, the central government has the power to remove a governor at any time without giving him or her any reason and without granting an opportunity to be heard. However, this power cannot be exercised in an arbitrary, capricious or unreasonable manner. The power of removing governors should only be exercised in rare and exceptional circumstances for valid and compelling reasons. The mere reason that a governor is at variance with the policies and ideologies of the central government or that the central government has lost confidence in him or her is not sufficient to remove a governor. Thus, a change in the central government cannot be a ground for removal of governors or to appoint more favorable persons to this post. A decision to remove a governor can be challenged in a court of law. Society for Unaided Private Schools of Rajasthan vs. Union of India Every citizen has a right to establish and administer schools under Article 19, Clause 1, Subclause G so long as the activity remains charitable. Such an activity undertaken by private schools supplements the primary obligation of the state. The state can regulate by law the activities of private schools, including admission by imposing reasonable restrictions in the public interest under Article 19, Clause 6 of the Constitution. The quota obligation imposed on private unaided non-minority schools is in the public interest and is a reasonable restriction for the purpose of Article 19, Clause 6. Therefore, the Right to Education Act shall apply to private unaided non-minority schools. Regarding unaided minority schools, Article 29, Clause 1 of the Constitution protects the right of minorities to conserve their language, script, or culture. And Article 30, Subclause 1 protects their right to establish and administer schools of their choice. Imposing a quota on such schools would result in changing their character and would therefore violate their minority rights. Therefore, the Right to Education Act shall not apply to unaided minority schools. Regarding government-aided minority schools, Article 29, Clause 2 of the Constitution protects every citizen's right to admission to a state-aided school. Accordingly, the Right to Education Act shall apply to aided minority schools. Pramati Educational and Cultural Trust vs. Union of India Society for Unaided Private Schools of Rajasthan vs. Union of India and another insofar it holds that the 2009 Act is applicable to aided minority schools is overruled. Constitution 93rd Amendment Act 2005 inserting Clause 5 of Article 15 of the Constitution and the Constitution 86th Amendment Act 2002, inserting Article 21A of the Constitution, do not alter the basic structure or framework of the Constitution and are constitutionally valid. Right to Education Act is not ultra-wise. Article 19, Clause 1, Subclause G of the Constitution. Case number 75 is S.R. Bombay v. Union of India. 1994, Supreme Court laid down certain guidelines as to prevent the misuse of Article 356 of the Constitution. Based on the report of the Sarkaria Commission on Center-State Relations 1988, Supreme Court enlisted the situations where the exercise of power under Article 356 could be proper and improper. So held that secularism is one of the basic features of the Constitution. 
Secularism is a positive concept of equal treatment of all religions. Any state government which pursues non-secular policies or non-secular courses of action acts contrary to the constitutional mandate and renders itself amenable to action under Article 356. I have made a detailed video on this case. I'll put the link in the description. Case number 76. Ismail Faruqi vs Union of India The power of acquisition is the sovereign or, or prerogative power of the state to acquire property. Such power exists independent of Article 300A of the Constitution or the earlier Article 31 of the Constitution, which merely indicate the limitations on the power of acquisition by the state. Such acquisition per se does not violate Article 25 or 26 of the Constitution. What is protected under Article 25 and 26 is a religious practice, which prompts an essential and integral part of religion. A practice may be a religious practice, but not an essential part of religious practice. While offer of prayer or worship is a religious practice, its offering at every location where such prayer can be offered would not be an essential or integral part of such religious practice. Such religious practice, unless the place has a particular significance for the religion, so as to form an essential or integral part thereof. As Pimental versus Union of India. The words religious denomination in Article 26 of the Constitution must take their color from the word religion. And if this so, the expression religious denomination must also satisfy three conditions. Firstly, it must be a collection of individuals who has a system of beliefs or doctrines which they regard as conducive to their spiritual well-being, that is, a common faith. Secondly, common organization. And thirdly, designation by a distinctive name. The Commissioner, Hindu Religious Endowments, Madras vs. Sri Laksminder Tirtha Swamiyar of Sri Shirumat. The court laid down the essential practice taste. It observed what constitutes an essential part of a religion will be ascertained with reference to the tenets and doctrines of that religion itself. The essential religious practice test means that any religious practice which forms the basis or is so essential to that religion that it will fall within the protection of Article 25 and Article 26 should be protected as such. Any other activity, not an essential practice, does not require protection and will be covered in exceptions to the right to religion. There are some exceptions which are given in the, in the constitution itself like economic, political and financial or other secular activity which may be associated with religious practice. Selvi versus State of Karnataka Court declared that Three prominent police interrogation techniques, narco analysis, the lie detector test, and brain mapping violated an accused person's right against self incrimination under Article 20, subclause 3, and her right to life and personal liberty under Article 21 of the Constitution. A forcible administration of the above test would be an unjustified intrusion into mental privacy and could lead to further stigma for the victim MC Mehta vs Union of India. It laid down the concept of public liability and absolute liability. Rural litigation and entitlement kendra Dehradun vs State of Uttar Pradesh laid down the concept of sustainable development. Indian Council for Environmental Legal Action vs Union of India laid down polluter based principle animal welfare board of india versus a nagraj court prohibited jallikattu and other animal races and fights held that animal fights incited by humans are illegal even those carried out under the 
गाइज ऑफ ट्रेडिशन एंड कल्चर सुभाष कुमार वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ बिहार राइट टू लाइफ इंक्लूड्स द राइट ऑफ एन्जॉयमेंट ऑफ पोल्यूशन फ्री वाटर एंड एयर फॉर फुल एन्जॉयमेंट ऑफ लाइफ डी के वासु वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ वेस्ट बेंगल कोर्ट ले टाउन स्पेसिफिक गाइडलाइंस रिक्वायर टू बी फॉलोड बाय पुलिस वाइल मेकिंग अरेस्ट आई मेड अ डिटेल वीडियो ऑन दिस आउट पुट अ लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन शीला बारसे वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ महाराष्ट्र कोर्ट ले डाउन गाइडलाइंस कॉन्फरिंग प्रोटेक्शन टू वुमेन प्रिजनर्स इन पुलिस लॉकअप्स प्रेमचंद गर्ग वर्सेस एक्साइज कमिश्नर यू पी अलाहाबाद The court held that an order, which this court can make in order to do complete justice under Article 142 between the parties, must not only be consistent with the fundamental rights guaranteed by the Constitution, but it cannot even be inconsistent with the substantive provisions of the relevant statutory laws. Union Carbide Corporation v. Union of India. The court held that prohibition or limitations or provisions contained in ordinary law cannot ipso facto act as prohibitions or limitations on the constitutional powers under article 142 supreme court bar association versus union of india court observed that powers under article 142 cannot in any way be controlled by any statutory provisions but at the same time These powers are not meant to be exercised when their exercise may come directly in conflict with what has been expressly provided for in a statute dealing expressly with the subject. It was said that the said article could not be used to supplement the existing law, but only to supplement the law. Shubhash Mahajan v. State of Maharashtra Court laid down guidelines to prevent the abuse of the scheduled castes and the scheduled tribes prevention of atrocities act 1989 also known as stsc act held no absolute bar on anticipatory bail arrest to be made after preliminary inquiry public servant cannot be arrested without prior sanction diluted by amendments made to the act in 2018 government of nct delhi versus union of india The court held that Lieutenant Governor of N City of Delhi is bound by the aid and advice of the elected government of Delhi, except in matters of land, police, and public order. While holding so, the court has observed that in a democracy, real power must vest in the elected representatives, and Lieutenant Governor cannot interfere in every decision of the Delhi government. the words any matter employed in the provision to clause 4 of the article 239 aa cannot be inferred to mean every matter maru ram versus union of india court held that the power under article 72 is to be exercised on the advice of the central government and not by the president on his own and that the advice of the government binds the head of the republic Kehar Singh versus Union of India the court laid down that the order of the president cannot be subjected to judicial review on its merits except within the strict limitations defined in Maru Ram Apro Sudhakar versus government of Andhra Pradesh it is a well set principle that a limited judicial review of exercise of clemency powers is available to the supreme court and high courts granting of clemency by the president or governor can be challenged on the following grounds the order has been passed without application of mind the order is mala fide the order has been passed on extraneous or wholly irrelevant considerations relevant material has been kept out of consideration the order suffers from arbitrariness tribeni ban versus state of gujarat an undue long delay in the execution of the sentence would entitle the convict convict to approach supreme court under article 32 or high court under article 226 and get his sentence commuted 
Shatrughan Johan versus Union of India. The court observed that an inordinate and inexplicable delay in execution would preclude carrying out the sentence even in cases where the convict in question had committed an offense of terrorism. Overruled Devender Singh Bhullar versus State of NCT Delhi, which had ruled that a delay in disposing of a mercy petition was by itself insufficient ground for committing the sentence of those convicted to death under anti terrorism statutes. Union of India versus Tulshiram Patel, 1985. The court held that. The dismissal, removal, and reduction in rank of a person convicted on criminal charges is in public interest and therefore not violative of Article 311, Clause 2, or Article 14 of the Constitution. Tamlal Dhingra v. Union of India Article 311 is available only when dismissal, removal, reduction in rank is by way of punishment. So it is difficult to determine as to when an order of termination of service or reduction in rank amounts to punishment. The Supreme Court laid down two tastes to determine when termination is by way of punishment. Firstly, whether the servant had a right to hold the post or the rank. Secondly, whether he has been visited with evil consequences. If a government servant had the right to hold the post or rank under the terms of any contract of service or under any rule governing the service, then the termination of a service or a reduction in rank amounts to punishment and he will be entitled to protection under Article 311. Articles 310 and Article 311 apply to government servants whether permanent, temporary, officiating or on provision. The procedure laid down in Article 311 is intended to assure first a measure of tenure to government servants who are covered by the article and secondly to provide certain safeguards against arbitrary dismissal or removal of a government servant or reduction to a lower rank. Union of India vs. Balbir Singh The Supreme Court held that the court can examine the circumstances on which the satisfaction of the president or government is taken under provision to article 311 clause 2 if the court finds that the circumstances have no bearing whatsoever on the security of the state the court can hold that satisfaction of the president or the governor which is required for passing an order has been vitiated by wholly extraneous or irrelevant considerations Campaign for Judicial Accountability and Reforms versus Union of India Chief Justice is the master of the roster Followed the ratio of State of Rajasthan versus Prakash Chand 1998 Thank you so much for giving me your valuable time Do thumbs up if you love the video If you have any doubts do comment I'll try in the best possible way to clear those doubts Do subscribe the channel as I'll be posting regularly such law contents Till then I'm Ricky signing out